The new college football playoff rankings came out Tuesday night. There's a shakeup in the top six after losses by Tennessee and Alabama. Vols dropped to number five after their loss at Georgia. The Dogs, by virtue of winning that game, catapults from three to one. Ohio State holds at two. Rival Michigan joins them at three, followed by TCU at four. Now Oregon is in the top six. Alabama drops to nine. Clemson went from four to ten after the Tigers lost at Notre Dame. All right, let's welcome in the Dodd father, Dennis Dodd, joining us here on CBS Sports HQ. And we're really going to focus on one of the two games on the SEC on CBS doubleheader. It is going to be Missouri and, and Tennessee. And really, it's about the Vols here, Dennis. When you take a look at the rankings, they go from one to five. Give me first the best case scenario for Josh Heupel, Hendon Hooker and company to get to the CFP. Yeah, the best case scenario is obviously if they win out, you know, you suppose wins over Missouri, South Carolina and Vanderbilt, which is about as easy a finishing kick as you can get, I guess, in the SEC if you're in the pl in playoff contention. But the, e the, the best path for them right now is Ella Georgia winning out. Obviously, that eliminates any chance of two SEC teams in that they would beat, you know, LSU or Old Miss in the West, maybe a long shot Alabama. Obviously, with two losses, they're not going to be in. But if Georgia wins out, it's going to be one team from the SEC. Now, it would behoove then Ohio State to beat Michigan because a lot of people think that in the Big 12 championship game, Michigan has a better chance of dropping out of the top four than if Ohio State drops out. Michigan's strength of schedule is really bad. We don't have to go through that. Those first three games were terrible. So that might be the dividing line. So that, in theory, leaves two spots open. So Tennessee, which would not have played for its championship, would not have won its division sitting there 11 and one. There may be room there without even a fight. The competition would be a one loss Pac-12, which I think USC, if they, if they went out, has the best chance of getting in the playoff, not Oregon because of the Georgia game. TCU at 12 and one. And then you'd maybe, maybe an ACC champion, North Carolina long shot, and then perhaps even a better shot, Clemson at 12 and one. But that looks pretty good for Tennessee. Now the committee, Tommy, favors conference champions. But in this case, I think everybody knows that Tennessee's pretty good. I say it time after time. They beat, played six ranked teams, beaten five of them. The eye test is there. Um, I think the, the loss to Georgia as time goes on is gonna wilt in the eyes of the committee even though it was pretty strong. It's only 14 points on paper, but it could have been 50 to 13. It was that bad. I was there. But I think as time goes on, Tennessee will be regarded in that best case scenario as one of the four best. To your point, though, Dennis, they do favor conference champions. But if there is a conference to get that second bid in, it traditionally has been the SEC. Now, you referenced a couple things that would be a best case scenario for the Vols. What are the biggest threats to Tennessee not making the CFP? Well, the biggest threat is LSU beating Georgia in the title game. That almost assures two for the SEC. I think the way Georgia's played this year, if they're undefeated going into the championship game and LSU pulls off the upset, then you would have two from the SEC. Now, on the other side of that, if Michigan beats Ohio State, I think you'd have two from the Big Ten, and Tennessee would be shut out, as well as the three other Power Five conferences from playing in the playoff. Because I think Ohio State has proved itself over the season. They, uh, until the Northwestern game, they've been very, very consistent. Uh, they played a quality non-conference schedule with Notre Dame up top. They may have the best player in the country at C.J. Stroud. And I think the committee at that point would probably leave Ohio State. Again, depending on you know margin of victory, I think at that point, Ohio State would stay in the top four. And even if they don't, again, then you've got that real, I just described the conflict with Tennessee going against those three uh, conference champions that they would have to beat out. But yeah, there's a very real threat there of two from the SEC and two from the Big Ten. Again, we're taking a look at the top 10. We know that both Oregon and USC out of the Pac-12, which that conference has been a while and they try to get to the CFP. Let's circle back to what you had talked about under one of the best case scenario, which is this is a team that just lost between the hedges at Sanford State, which you were at, and yet they turn around here this week and they all of a sudden probably going to be dogs fans moving forward because as Georgia goes, that helps Tennessee's case as well, I would think. Yeah, there. You know, Georgia goes undefeated and Tennessee goes in there. And really, again, on paper, it looked like it was close. Tennessee led this game in the first quarter, three to nothing. 
But I, it was to the point at after halftime, 24 to six, Tommy, that I almost thought that Kirby Smart shut it down. I, I thought they could have gone out there offensively and played a lot more creatively. They didn't, they relied on that defense. I'm not criticizing them. They sacked and Hooker six times and, and limited him to I think his lowest total passing all year, 195 yards. So no, I, I think that that will bode well. I don't know if they necessarily need Georgia to go undefeated. I think that, as I said, the best case scenario is if Ohio, if Ohio State beats Michigan and eliminates them and Georgia wins out no matter what the record, you know, unless Georgia has two losses. All right, UT, we know their schedule favorable the rest of the way. We also know that Georgia has a similar path with maybe that road game at Kentucky, which is currently ranked 24th in the country. Dennis, certainly appreciate it. Uh, enjoy the week here at home for you as you continue to watch college football, of course, uh, as you were on the road with Josh Pate last weekend. One thing to do uh, as we button things up, odds to make or miss the, the CFP. Interesting of note here. Uh, that UT is still minus 190 to make the college football playoff, plus 160 to miss it. And then Ohio State is minus 650 to make it. Michigan plus 120 to crash the CFP party. Buttoning it up with the odds for this game after losing at Georgia. Josh Heupel and company return home. Nearly three touchdown favorites against Missouri and a Tiger team had struggled with the Wildcats last weekend. Let's welcome in two of the guys behind the Cover 3 podcast, college football experts Chip Patterson, Barrett Salee here, continuing our coverage, getting us ready for the SEC on CBS Doubleheader, starting with Missouri at number five, Tennessee. Uh, Barrett, I'll start with you here. After losing to Georgia, Tennessee's schedule isn't that difficult. So they're looking to make statement wins to try to still get their foot in the playoff here. They're favored by 20 and a half in this game. The total is 56 and a hook. What do you think about the Volunteers' chances in this one? Yeah, I'll take Tennessee. I mean, I, the hook really helps because the three touchdown win cashes. But I think the biggest thing with this is that they realize that they are a one trick pony last week. They realize that they have no change up. They have no curveball. And right now, I think in the early part of this game, they're going to try to do something different. They're going to try to mix things up just to understand what they can do if they get to a bigger game down the stretch. And then second quarter, early third, they're going to know they need style points. So they're going to crank it up. They're going to do all kinds of damage through the air. This is a pretty good Missouri defense. So maybe they flip the rolls a little bit. But I do think Tennessee, because they need style points, uh, will pull away in the end and keep their foot on the gas, leave their starters in pretty much the entire game. Yeah, uh, the trend is not my friend here. Because the trend would say that Missouri, which has had almost all of its games go under the total, and Tennessee, which has had three out of its last four games go under the total, they would say take the under. But you're crazy if I'm going to take an <laughs> under when Tennessee needs these style points. Now, do I think that Tennessee is going to get us to 57 points on its own? No, but I do think that this Missouri team is going to look at some of the success that Georgia was able to have through the passing attack and while Missouri doesn't field an overly dynamic passing attack, I think that as we saw the headlines recently of, you know, Eli Drinkwitz getting a little bit of a pay raise, a little bit of an extension, more money for the assistants, they're not wanna go, gonna go out there and get totally embarrassed. So uh, Tennessee's gonna do most of the work. I think the volunteers are gonna be able to give us a 42, maybe even 45 on their own. But I do think that Missouri, maybe a little bit at the beginning and maybe a little bit at the end, they're gonna be able to go and get us to 14, 17 points. And all of that, again, Tennessee's defensive issues exposed by Georgia, Tennessee needing style points, all that is gonna to lead to something that breaks with the trend with both these teams recently. We go over the total. Everything here on the side of Tennessee, Barrett going with Tennessee minus the 20 and a half. Chip saying they need those style points to look for a lot of points scored here. All right, guys, we have number nine, now two loss, Alabama. At number 11, Ole Miss. Look, if I'm Ole Miss, I am smelling blood in the water when it comes to this Alabama team, right? We know Nick Saban responds well to losses, but Chip, what is the recipe that has been laid out for teams to beat Alabama? And can Alabama in this game cover the 12 that they're favored by? I'm not going to trust Alabama to cover the 12 because this is a true road environment. And Alabama, over the last two seasons, when it goes on the road, its offense in particular 
has not really been consistent. Um, you know, against Arkansas, they got off to a very fast start. Bryce Young leaves the game with an injury. Then they start to sputter a little bit. A couple long touchdown runs from Jameer Gibbs make that look a little bit better. But, you know, the Texas game is another example. Uh, obviously, LSU is another example. The way that that Alabama offense really struggled mightily throughout the entire first half against the Tigers. Uh, I just think that this is going to be a spot where the blood in the water that Ole Miss is going to sense is that Alabama is playing away from Bryant-Denny Stadium. I think that there is a way that Alabama can try to take the playbook from last year. You remember, get your popcorn ready, and then uh, Nick Saban unplugged the popcorn machine by playing so slow that Ole Miss never got a chance to get into a rhythm. But Ole Miss had a late bye week here. I think that they are going to be so much fresher. I think they're going to be well prepared to go out there with a good game plan against this Alabama defense. And the way that Nick Saban was talking in the press conference about trying to motivate his players based on their own professional futures, yikes. I'm wondering where this Alabama team is at mentally. Give me Ole Miss and all of these points. Crimson Tide might win this game, but I am not trusting this Crimson Tide team at this point in the year in a true road environment. You know, Chip, I'll take the points, but I'll take it, uh, Ole Miss straight up as well. I, I think Ooh. you're right. Everything you said is 100% right. That they, this You could not pick out a better time to play Alabama if you're Ole Miss. Like you said, Lane Kiffin with two weeks to draw up plays against his former boss. You know he's going to use that time wisely. And then, on top of what Chip said, the weakness for Alabama, I think, plays into the strength of Ole Miss's defense, and that's tackles for loss. Ole Miss's defense, look, it's not great. It's maybe not even adequate at times. But they do get after the quarterback, and Alabama's offensive line has been pretty dreadful all year long. And like you said, uh, Chip, road environment, loud crowd. We've seen what happens when Alabama faces that situation for the last couple of years. Plus, on top of it, you look at how Ole Miss operates offensively. Very similar to what Tennessee does. And so because of that, I think they're going to take advantage of Alabama's weakness defensively, which is its secondary. So I think, look, take the points. I'm surprised this is a double-digit line. I'm surprised it's even within uh, over a touchdown. But take Ole Miss straight up as well, because I think Ole Miss is in a perfect spot and matches up well against a team that has lost two of its last three. Come to the SIP and be prepared. Uh, I can't imagine what's going to happen if Alabama goes to three losses here. All right, guys, best bet in the SEC this weekend. Barrett, we'll start with you. I'll go Auburn and lay the points against Texas A&M. Look, that place was flat for the last couple of weeks. Jordan-Hare Stadium is not normally like that. But if you watched last week's game against Mississippi State, yeah, it was on the road. But those players will play for Carnell Williams. And those fans love the fact that a legend is now coaching their team. Yeah, it's too little too late in terms of contending. But they're going to get behind these players. And on top of that, I think Carnell's uh, impact in terms of what he preaches offensively has made a statement. You go back and look at what happened in that second half. Man, whatever Carnell told him in the locker room, it worked. They went more with Robbie Ashford on the ground. They didn't try to make him anything that he wasn't. They got both running backs involved. And I think Texas A&M's broken, man. They don't have the depth defense. They don't have the depth anywhere, whether it's sickness or injuries or whatever. This is a lost season, and they are running into a hornet's nest in Jordan-Hare Stadium on Saturday night. When we're breaking down NFL draft clips and Ryan Wilson is telling you where Will Levis is going to go in the NFL draft, we are going to be showing you a lot of clips of Saturday's performance against Vanderbilt. Because this is one time after Kentucky's offense has really struggled for a couple of weeks where we know that Will Levis can cook. So he is going to light up Vanderbilt's secondary in this game. Georgia's on deck next week. You're not going to get any highlights from that. So as we're trying to really build up Will Levis, as we're trying to really build up this Kentucky offense, his own NFL draft stock, I think they're going to let Levis absolutely fry uh, Vanderbilt's defense. And we go Kentucky team total over 33. Guys, unlike some years, a lot to be decided still in the SEC as we enter week 11. Thank you guys so much. Recapping their picks here. Remember, we have an SEC on CBS doubleheader this weekend. Chip likes the over the 56 and a half in Missouri at Tennessee, saying Tennessee is going to be looking for those style points there. Uh, Barrett laying the points with the volunteers. Ole Miss 
plus the 12, both of them like that. Barrett says, you know what? Take Ole Miss on the money line as well. Potentially Alabama looking at three losses heading into this one. And you see both of their best bets there. Chip liking the team total for Kentucky against Vanderbilt. Best bet, Auburn minus one and a half. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.